Hello everyone, welcome to another Quad Education Test Prep Fundamentals video. My name is Tom and today we're talking about a question type from the SAT reading section that doesn't get a whole lot of attention as far as I can tell. It appears at the end of some of the reading passages and really kind of seems like it's a bit out of place in a traditional reading context. That question type is SAT reading graph and table questions, so let's take a look. Okay, SAT reading section graph and table questions. So a while back, I did a video on SAT writing section graph and table questions. And in my SAT writing section graph and table questions I video, I said I would do a video on SAT reading section graph and table questions someday, and that day is today. So obviously go watch that video so you can get the full effect of my foreshadowing. But suffice to say, today is the day when we talk about SAT reading section graph and table questions. So I appear to be making a big deal of distinguishing the reading section from the writing section graph and table questions. So what's the difference? Well, first of all, I won't lie to you. They're pretty similar, actually. They feel out of place. They don't really involve that much math, even though they're a graph question. And they pretty much just exist to provide the SAT with some sort of competition to ACT science section questions, which is pretty much what these are. But really, the biggest difference, and this is the, really the distinguishing factor between reading and writing section graph and table questions, is the capacity for the reading section graph and table questions to be pretty difficult. You see, the writing section graph and table questions just really aren't that hard for the most part. Uh, but these reading question types, though, uh, can manage to be pretty tough. And that's because they can draw pretty heavily from the context of the passage. And drawing heavily from context of the passage means that comprehension is going to come into play. And I don't suspect that you need an expert like me to tell you that comprehension in reading is hard. And so let me show you what I mean. And so looking at these two example questions here, you can see right away that at least one of them is basically impossible to solve without the context of the whole passage. If we look at 20, which statement is supported by the graph? You could make a pretty educated guess based off of just this graph alone, but with 21, there's nothing you can do because it's applying the data in the graph directly to lines in the passage, and you need to know what those lines mean in order to even know what applies to what. So if we do have this context issue, then how do we approach these? Well, to answer my second two questions there, where are they appearing and how do we approach them? Conveniently enough, the graph and table questions are always the last questions in each passage, in those passages that they're asking you about. And so what you should do is approach them in that order, do them last. And here's why. So since these questions involve context and comprehension, you need to give yourself the best chance to gather up and process all that context before you go and tackle those questions. And I find that the best way to gather context about a passage is just to answer questions about them. So in fewer words, you want to do these graph questions last and instead do the easier questions first. And like I said, the nice thing is those graph questions are last already. And so that's pretty convenient. Uh, if you make sure to answer them last, I think you'll find that they become a whole, whole lot more sensible, uh, even when they are more difficult. But now, quick disclaimer time. I'm making this big deal about how hard these questions can be, but, you know, sometimes they just aren't. So take a look at these two questions here. The first one says the data in figure, and that means the data in figure one, I think. But just try these for. And so, yeah, I mean, these these aren't that bad. So data in figure one best support which statement about mean probability of survival for the virtual moths. And you can see that really just the more edges they have, the more they survive. And that's just what answer D is. So that's like, I don't even know what these are, but. That's pretty clear. And then according to the data presented in figure two, they tell you, look at figure two, what was the mean search time in seconds to locate moths with five edge patches? And like there's five and there's two. And so in this case, it, it's not that bad. So just look out for that as well. Okay, so let's do a couple of example problems as is tradition on this show. Okay, here are a few sample problems. I will say that they don't need context. So go ahead and see what you can do with these. Okay, let's take a look. According to the figure, water demand in Bogota in 2005 was about what? And so we go to 2005 and we're seeing it right in there. And it's just, be, you need to be careful with uh, respect to the units because here we have 14 and a half. And so this is going to be halfway between 14 and 14 and a half. And that's 14 and a quarter. And so with the next one, according to the, the data presented in the figure, water demand in Bogota is best described as having 
And so without looking at the answers as is good practice, I'm going to say, okay, it kind of goes down and it goes back up. So it hits a, a low, a trough, if you will, in 2005, and it's gone back up. And so dropped considerably from 99 to 2002. I mean, I suppose, yeah. Uh, risen dramatically from 2000 to 2001. I wouldn't call that dramatic because this is much more dramatic here. Sorry, this is declined steadily from 02 to 04. So there's 2002 and there's 2004. That is a steady decline. And then remained stable from 07 to 09. And so what I would say as far as decisions go here is these are all almost right. But I would say the drop considerably from 99 to 2002 might be our best look because here in 99, we're at six, more than uh, 15 and a half. And here in 2002, we're down, you know, quite a good chunk. So I would say this would be our dropped considerably because it goes quite a bit down there. Okay, that's it for this video. Part of the trick to SAT reading graph and table questions is the fact that they vary in difficulty so much. They can be really easy, really hard. It's really hard to tell just from looking at them. The solution to that is making sure that you approach those questions last in the passage and making sure that you apply good process when you're solving them. So work visually, make sure you're finding good evidence for everything, just do it the right way. Anyway, if you found this material useful, we hope that you will like and share the video and subscribe to Quad Education. Please reach out to us if you require any additional tutoring. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day.